Hi, and welcome to this video on exam practice, part one, brought to you by the answer series. We are going to work through three questions in this video. I want you to pause the video, read through these questions on your own and try each of them. And then when you're ready, we'll go through the solutions together. In the first question, we need to work out the general term of the pattern. This is a routine question, and if you are up to date with your work, you should manage this very comfortably. We take the given numbers, write them out with little gaps in between so that we can write in the first row of differences. Then we use those results to get the second row of differences. We know we're on the right track if we get the same result for both of those second differences. We set that up as follows. We simply take 2a and make that equal to 12. And using that, we solve for a equal to 6. Then we move on. We take that result, but we take the first first difference and equate that now to 3a plus b equal to 9. And using our value, which we've substituted from a equal to 6, we can work out that b is equal to minus 9. Now we take the fact that a plus b plus c is equal to minus 3. We use the a and b values that we've already worked out and work out this time that c is equal to 0. So the general term of this pattern is generated by the formula tn equals 6n squared minus 9n. In the second question, we simply have to work out the value of the 50th term. So we're going to take 50, substitute it everywhere that we previously had an n value, and we work out that t50 is equal to 14,550. In question 1.3, we are asked to show that the sum of the first n first differences of this pattern can be given by the formula Sn equals 6n squared plus 3n. It's very important to remember that the row of first differences is a simple linear pattern, or if you prefer, an arithmetic sequence. We worked out in question 1.1 that the first differences were 9, 21, and 33. So we know that a is equal to 9, d is equal to 12, and we have a formula which we can take straight from the formula sheet. So substituting a equal to 9 and d equal to 12, and simplifying carefully, we end up with 6n squared plus 3n, which is exactly what we are asked to do. Question 1.4 is rather challenging, and we need to process this carefully. They are asking us how many consecutive first differences were added to the first term of the quadratic number pattern to obtain a term in the quadratic pattern that has a value of 21,060. This is challenging, but really we need to do what we are told in this question. So we're going to set up an equation, the answer to which is going to be 21,060. We are going to add the first term of the quadratic pattern and the sum of all the first differences and work out how many first differences we need to add by working out the value of n. If we put that equation into standard form, in other words, equal to zero, using the quadratic formula, we can work out that n either equals 59 or negative 119 over 2, which we discard because we cannot have a negative value, nor can we have a fraction. So the only possible value is 59, and there are 59 first differences that must be added. Now, it is possible that you might have chosen to work out that, in fact, the 60th term of the quadratic pattern has a value of 21,060. If you chose to do this, you're on the right track, but you haven't answered the question because you weren't asked which term has that value, but rather how many differences are added to the first term. So if you chose to work out that the 60th term has a value of 21,060, then you have to work backwards and work out that 59 first differences were added to the first term in order to get that value of T60. So no matter what method you used, the final answer is 59 first differences must be added. So make sure you answer the question that you have been asked. In the second question, we again have a quadratic pattern with terms 2, 3, 10, and 23. And I want you to pause the video, 
Try all the questions on your own and then we'll work through the solutions together. The first thing we had to do was simply work out the next term in the pattern. The quickest way to do this is to work out your row of first differences and establish that the difference between those first differences is six. So now working from the bottom up, the next difference in our second difference row will still be six. We add six to 13 to get the next first difference, and then we add 19 to 23 to get the next term in the quadratic pattern, which is 42. Working out the formula, we simply equate 2a with 6 and work out that a is 3. We substitute a into the 3a plus b formula, knowing that the result is 1, and work out that b is negative 8. Now we add the a and b values, which we've already found, and the c value to get an answer of 2, and work out that c is 7. So the nth term of this formula is given by 3n squared minus 8n plus 7. To work out the 20th term, we are simply going to take the formula that we've worked out, we're going to replace all the n values with 20, and work out that the 20th term is 1047. In question 2.2, we are asked to calculate which term in the sequence will have a value of minus 140. We know that this sequence is arithmetic, we have the formula given as tn equals a plus n minus 1d. We work out that our a value is 35 and our difference is minus 7. Remember that when the terms decrease from 35 to 28 to 21, the difference is negative. So careful substitution will give us n equal to 26. 2.3 is a nice question because it's different. It's challenging but doable. What they want to know from us is for which value of n will the sum of the first n terms of the arithmetic sequence, which we've just worked with in 2.2, equal the nth term of the quadratic sequence in 2.1. So you need to keep your head at the start. After that, it's fairly manageable. We know from our solution to question 2.1.2 that the general term of the quadratic pattern is given by 3n squared minus 8n plus 7. We also know that we can use the formula for the sum of an arithmetic sequence and work out that the sum of n terms produces an outcome of 77 over 2 times n minus 7 over 2 n squared. Those two formulae need to be equated because we are trying to find the value of n for which the first n terms of the arithmetic sequence will equal the quadratic sequence. So equating the two formulae, putting that statement into standard form, actually we have a surprisingly easy trinomial to factorize. If you don't like factors, use the quadratic formula. From this, we can read of two answers, n equal to 7 or n equal to 2 thirteenths. We discard the fraction and we retain n equals 7 as the only solution. So if we add the first seven terms of the arithmetic sequence, we will get the same result as the seventh term of the quadratic pattern. The final question is a very easy question, but it's very off-putting because suddenly we have trigonometry to deal with in the middle of patterns. This question is becoming very popular, was recently asked in the 2021 May June exam. So make sure that you know exactly what is going on here. Pause the video, try the question on your own, and then we'll look at it together. We're going to stick to our basics, and our basics dictate that if we take the second term and subtract the first term, the result will be the same as taking the third term and subtracting the second term. Simple underlying principle for an arithmetic sequence. This means that the second term of 2 sine 3x subtract the first term of negative 1 will produce a result of 2 sine 3x plus 1. We do exactly the same thing with the third term, which is 5. We subtract the second term, which is 2 sine 3x, and we end up with 5 minus 2 sine 3x. We equate those results and simplify. If we work that out, we can see that sine 3x has to equal 1. It is helpful to know what you're working with, so I'm going to draw a very rough sketch of a sine graph to help me understand this question. So if we go to our 
very roughly drawn set of axes and just draw a basic sign graph. We know that it will cross the axis here at 180. More importantly, we know that it will hit its maximum value at 90 degrees and that that maximum value will be 1 and that in the whole period of 360 degrees, that is the only time we will get a result of 1. That is the value of 3x. So if 3x equals 90 degrees, then x itself must be 30 degrees. So our answer is simply x equals 30 degrees. We don't have to give any other details other than simply stating this answer. It is useful to know if we are definitely right. So substituting that value will give you a middle term of 2 because 2 sine 90 degrees will give you 2 times 1, which is 2. And you can see that the difference between these terms is 3. So pause the video if you didn't process everything I've just said. Look at it again on your own and try to make sure that you really understand how easy this question is to manage. Thank you for watching this video, brought to you by The Answer Series. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.